Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. And today we'll be talking once again remotely with Dr. Brett Fink. Dr. Fink is an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon who practices at the Community Health Network in Indianapolis, Indiana. Dr. Fink did his medical school training at Washington University in St. Louis, and from there an orthopedic surgery residency at the Portsmouth Naval Hospital. And from there completed two foot and ankle fellowships, one at Boston University and the other at Miami University. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Fink. It's certainly a pleasure to be here, Randall. Well, Dr. Fink, today I thought we would talk about a very common foot topic, and that's the treatment of patients with foot problems who also have diabetes. You and I possibly talk a little bit about or call that uh, the diabetic foot problem, but really it's, it's common foot problems that are made worse by diabetes. So first, let's talk a little bit about uh, how diabetes affects the foot and why we're so worried about that condition and foot problems. Sure. Well, <clears throat> as you know, but just for my listeners, uh, diabetes is basically a, a problem where the sugar in your blood isn't regulated properly. It's usually because the insulin either doesn't work or isn't working properly. Um, and the problem with diabetes in the foot is really that the sugar levels are too high. And these sugar levels can attach to the proteins in your body including the proteins that are in your nerves or in your connective tissue or on other cells and make them not work properly. And so essentially that's how diabetes affects the foot and how it affects all organ systems. How it affects the foot specifically is that it attaches to the longest nerves in the foot the most, which the longest nerves are the ones that go from your spine to your foot and makes them numb. It can actually affect all the nerves to your foot including the ones that go to the muscles, the ones that go to your skin and give you sensation, and the ones that control your blood flow in your foot, and also the sweating in your foot, the, what they call the autonomic nervous system. So all of these nerves function less. So I guess one of the problems is that we have a, a higher propensity or a higher chance of damaging our feet without knowing it? Yes, well, I, I think probably the, the one that's easiest to figure out is that um, it damages the sensation to your nerves, and the sensation is part of the way that we protect ourselves from being injured. Of course, if you, if, you were to if you were to step on a tack or something like that, the sensation would tell you that you stepped on the tack, and it would allow you to withdraw the foot so you didn't damage yourself more. Well, when your sensation is uh, decreased to a level where you really can't tell that you're stepping on a tack or anything else, uh, it can uh, lead to damage in your foot. And, and this damage can lead to further sort of uh, problems with the foot, or is this something that just occurs in small little bits over a, a long period of time, and that's what, saw, that's what creates the problem? Or is it the fact that we don't know our foot is injured and we don't take care of it at that point? Well, I think it's... it's it can be very complicated if you get down into the nitty gritty, but I think essentially the best thing to think about is that, that when you develop an injury, you don't know that you're injuring your foot. And so, so if you were to get a rock in your shoe, um, you wouldn't know that rock is in your shoe until it perhaps had caused a wound. If, you, if you're normal and you have your normal sensation and you develop a stress injury in your foot, then you're, you're body tells you that that thing is injured because it becomes painful and you stop using it. As opposed to someone with diabetes who will not stop using their foot even when it's injured and really essentially beat their bones and joints to death. And you also mentioned the problem with the blood flow. Is that because of the nerve damage or does diabetes also affect the, the blood vessels in the foot as well? Well actually both. Uh, diabetes affects the blood flow because it doesn't because there are small nerves in your foot that are that control the blood flow in your foot so that it dilates up the blood vessels or constricts them depending upon whether your body needs blood in a certain area when the autonomic nervous system is not functioning your body doesn't know that it needs blood in a certain area it doesn't know when to shut off those blood vessels so your foot becomes swollen and reddened in a lot of ways. But diabetes also separately affects 
the walls of your blood vessels leading to hardening of the arteries at a much more accelerated rate than you'd normally see. So if I understand the current thinking about how diabetes affects the foot in general, it's, it's sort of twofold. One is that it affects the nervous system so that you don't know you're actually injuring your foot repetitively. And it also affects the blood supply so that you're not really able to get enough blood supply or, or in some ways the right blood supply at the right time to the foot to either heal that injury or to, to, to give the foot what it needs in terms of oxygen, nutrients, and that sort of stuff. Is that sort of um, what I should understand about how diabetes affects the foot? Yes, di diabetes affects the foot in many, many different ways. And I think that you've hit on most of the big ones right there. Well, in terms of you as a foot surgeon, when you see a patient who's a diabetic and, and they've been referred to you because they have a problem that is related to their foot and potentially related or made worse by their diabetes, what sort of conditions are you seeing in the foot that you are needing to treat at that point? Well, a lot of people come to me because they're just worried about their foot and they want it looked at to check and see if there are any problems developing. And that's a fairly common thing that I see. And having a doctor or a, a doctor that specializes in feet look at your feet every six months or so is actually not a bad idea for someone that's starting to develop diabetic foot problems. They're starting to get some tingling in their feet. They might be starting to get some deformities. But diabetic people often co come to me for problems too, problems that have re caused their foot to become certain ways that aren't things that have become emergencies. So uh, common things that I might see someone with diabetes for would be sudden swelling in the foot that might be le leading to a stress injury. <clears throat> uh, I also see them for painful conditions of the foot, something called painful peripheral neuropathy, which is basically a pain syndrome that happens as the nerves are starting to fail. The third thing that I see people for is ulcerations, basically sores that have developed in their foot because they aren't bearing weight correctly on their foot. So these ulcerations are the, are, are the things we've just been talking about where you don't know you're damaging your foot, the shoe may be rubbing, or you may have stepped on a nail, for example, and not known it, or you may have a rock in your shoe that actually just erodes into the skin. And that's the source of these ulcers primarily? Well, there are lots of different reasons that, th that you can have an ulcer on your foot, but you're right. Basically, it's because the sensation in the skin is not functioning well enough to protect you from your skin. And there are a couple of different ways. First of all, like you said, people can have trauma to their feet that de they don't realize. They can wear a new pair of shoes that don't fit quite properly and are putting pressure in a certain area of their foot that has actually caused the skin to die. The, other thing is that they can, they can have a foreign body in their, in their shoe, which is actually fairly rare, um, that they haven't checked their shoe, haven't emptied it out, and they, develop, they, they have a little a child's toy or a pebble or something in that, that's in there that develops uh, foot problems. But probably the most common reason for people to develop ulcers on their feet is because the weight on the bottom of their foot isn't being um, transferred evenly from the bones to the uh, uh, ground. And this causes pressure concentrations in the foot which lead to calluses and the calluses because they are basically like a hard thing on the foot uh, can lead to an ulceration too. Well let's talk a little bit about prevention. You mentioned prevention um, and you mentioned that it's probably a good thing for patients who are starting to have problems develop because of their diabetes with their feet, it's a good thing to have some sort of physician take a look at their feet once every six months. What are you looking for during those visits? Well, we look for, we, the first thing that we do is that we check for their sensation. And we use a small filament that, uh, that will apply a 10 gram force to the bottom of the foot. And we try to see if they can uh, detect that because many people come in and they they don't feel any tingling they don't really know that their sensation has been cut down until we check them with this filament which applies a very specific amount of force and we see if they can they can sense that 
at some point it has developed that type of nerve damage, enough nerve damage that they cannot sense that filament, then approximately 90% of their sensation has been damaged and has gone away. The second thing that we do is that we look for things that might contribute to this, things like peripheral vascular disease, a situation where the arteries aren't, may not be getting enough blood flow down to the skin. And then we look for deformities and counsel them on things like proper shoe wear, uh, ways of taking care of their feet, and, count, and counsel them on the risk of them developing a problem that may even endanger their foot. So at that point, there's not anything other than making sure you're very vigilant at watching for any sorts of open wounds or damage to the foot. Because you can't feel it, I'm assuming that part of that counseling just means that they're very vigilant at looking at their feet every day and making sure that there's no damage visibly that they can see. Is, is that accurate? Yeah, <clears throat> but that is a harder thing than you might expect on, in someone with diabetes. Because people with diabetes are generally of a certain age where their, where their eyesight and their flexibility may not be uh, adequate to really uh, check their feet, a lot of times we have to discuss uh, certain ways in which they can uh, check their feet, um, which they may not think about. A lot of people that, are, that ha may have vision problems or are not flexible enough may not have the ability to just cross their legs and look at the bottom of their feet, or they may have something like a total joint replacement that may prevent them from doing that. One of the things I think that, that we see as well is nail care in diabetics. Is there anything special that a diabetic with or without foot problems should concentrate on in terms of, of taking care of their toenails? Well, yeah, I, diabetics in general tend to have a condition called onchiomycosis, which is basically when the, um, when the nails become very thickened. And it can make the toenails very difficult to trim. Uh, that, on top of the eyesight problems and the flexibility problems, may make it easy for them to damage themselves significantly when they do uh, toenail uh, trimming. And so in certain cases, uh, we just do it for the patients. In other cases where we're, we're just trying to counsel them on ways on which to keep from damaging their foot while they're doing na normal nail hygiene. And you'd mentioned shoe wear, that you counsel patients on the, the, the acceptable types of shoes depending on how serious their condition is. What sort of recommendations in general do you give people about shoe wear uh, that these patients who have diabetes? Well, I would say that the number one thing is that someone with diabetes should always wear socks. Um, <clears throat> Wearing uh, socks that are white helps uh, identify any drainage that might be coming from the foot uh, early on. And so I think that that's always a good idea. Uh, the socks sh should um, not have uh, seams in them. Some socks do have seams that can, that can push on the foot. And they should be made of some type of absorbent material that will wick away the moisture from the foot so that they don't develop um, areas where the skin might break down. I think that it's a good idea for um, any diabetic patient with uh, nerve damage to look at finding a shoe with an adequate room in the, uh, in the toe box so that the, um, the upper portion of the, the shoe does not rub against hammer toes or bony prominences in the foot that uh, tend to develop as we get older. Uh, lace shoes are very helpful. I think that it's a bad idea for diabetic patients, especially with any form of neuropathy, to wear sandals or an open-toed shoe because things like rocks can get underneath uh, the foot and cause problems. Uh, I think that diabetics have to be very uh, aware of where the seams are in a shoe and to stay away from any shoe that is made of a synthetic material that may not uh, conform well to the foot. And you also mentioned these uh, visits to the uh, physician, usually a, a foot physician, to monitor the foot as, as maybe the condition gets a little worse. How often do you normally recommend that um, someone who has active diabetes has their foot checked um, on an ongoing basis? Well, it really depends upon how, um, how many risk factors they might have. If they have uh, foot deformity, a history of previous ulceration, uh, significant uh, peripheral artery disease, uh, and dense neuropathy, 
uh, every three months is not unreasonable. If they have fewer of those risk factors, then it may be something they only have to do when they see their doctor every year. Uh, and it, like I said, it really depends upon the, intensi the intensity and the number of risk factors they have that might um, cause them to have a higher chance of developing ulcerations or other problems associated with the foot. You know, it's interesting. I, I've seen uh, several different sort of shoe clinics or foot clinics uh, crop up locally so that it's very easy for elderly patients to get in very quickly and have a nurse or someone look at their feet. And I'm, I'm not even certain it costs any money. It's just part of their diabetic care. But it, it doesn't necessarily require an office visit, making an appointment with a doctor and going in and seeing the doctor. It, it's, it's being done more commonly, I think, in a group setting where patients can easily get in and out and have that as often as necessary, have their feet looked at and go about their business with the least disruption of their schedule. I don't, I don't know what's going on in your area, but those have become quite popular here. Right. A lot of hospitals, uh, uh, as just a matter of public health, are offering those kind of services. And many, and many primary care doctors uh, will do foot surveillance in their uh, diabetic patients just as a part of their normal examination. Well, let's talk a little bit about conditions that get a little bit worse and require some very specific treatment in terms of the diabetic foot. Um, what sort of treatments do you find are the early treatments when people begin developing active ongoing problems with their feet secondary the, to the um, diabetes that require a little bit more than just simply surveillance? Well, I think it's important to say that any patient with diabetes, the best way to avoid uh, foot problems is to um, is to make sure that your diabetes is under control. And usually your primary care doctor will check a hemoglobin A1C, depending upon the severity of the diabetes, anywhere from every three months to every year. And keeping that hemoglobin A1C below seven has been found to be one of the most important things. The second thing is to uh, make sure that you don't smoke because people with diabetes end up developing these problems much more commonly when they smoke. Um, the third thing is the, the uh, um, um, watching your feet like we talked about. Those are the most important things to keep you out of trouble. Now some of the common things that I see that I might see a patient for uh, such as for a foot ulcer, uh, it might be just a matter of wound care and education as far as telling them uh, the proper shoe wear to keep them from developing an ulcer in the future. Uh, there are many other conditions that uh, that uh, cause more serious problems, and I, I think that I think that we'll take those one by one. One of the most common problems is, like I said, diabetics end up not only having nerve damage to the nerves that give sensation, there are also these autonomic nerves that control the sweating in your foot. And so, a person with diabetes will have uh, dry skin and also often many rashes. So, someone with diabetes. Um, should, has to moisturize their skin more frequently than, um, than, the, than otherwise. In the foot clinic that I trained in, in uh, at the University of Miami, uh, they actually used to tell the diabetic patients to use um, shortening on their feet. Now, I think that shortening is a little messy, and so I would just recommend using a, uh, uh, a good emollient like uh, Vaseline intensive care or a Lubriderm type of uh, medication in order to um, uh, moisturize the feet. And I would recommend doing it several times a day. Um, swelling is also a, a common problem with people with diabetes. And if you're going to use a device such as a compression hose to help uh, control the swelling in your foot, you really have to watch your foot very carefully for the first couple of uh, um, the first couple of uh, uh, times that you wear it. I would take them off and reapply them several times during the day because uh, people with neuropathy that use compression hose can actually develop um, sores around the bony prominences on the sides of their feet, especially it seems to me like the outsides of their feet from the compression hoses. Um, the third problem that I think people have is called painful peripheral neuropathy. And like I said, when the nerves start to die, it can become very painful. Uh, often, it's kind of a sunburn type of pain. 
Uh, it can also be a tingling, uh, uncomfortable kind of pain, like uh, people are jabbing you with needles. Uh, there are many uh, lotions that can be done that can be used to treat this, including a medication that you can get over the counter called capsaicin cream uh, or Zostrix that can help take away some of the uh, uh, pain. But there are also other medications such as Cymbalta, uh, Lyrica, Neurontin that can, uh, uh, that, that can help with this orally to help with the pain also. Um, as far as swelling is concerned, uh, if you are a diabetic and you develop swelling in your feet, you have to be very careful about it. Uh, it is not always an infection. Uh, if you do not have a wound and you develop sudden swelling in your feet, it is more commonly a stress injury, which we call a Charcot joint. A Charcot joint is basically a situation where the bone or the joint in your foot has developed a fracture that can go on to become very unstable. When it becomes unstable, it can actually deform the foot if it's not properly treated. And so if you develop sudden swelling, and you don't know what it is and some, you know, a doctor like an ER physician or a primary care physician puts you on antibiotics because they think it is, um, because they think it's infected, it's a good idea to make sure that you're not developing this stress change, which surprisingly a lot of primary care doctors don't seem to really recognize all the time. Um, because it can, like I said, lead to uh, significant foot deformity. Well, I think one of the things that patients are always concerned about is the concept of gangrene when they have diabetes. And I think some patients don't really understand what gangrene is really about. So maybe we ought to look at the situation where patients are concerned about gangrene and, and one, describe that condition, and the other, when does that start to be a problem that you're worried about and you're trying to um, prevent or trying to be very aware of so that you can treat it very aggressively when it occurs. So first, let's talk a little bit about gangrene. What is gangrene? Sure, uh, gangrene is a very scary term. I mean, when you hear someone talk about gangrene, it, it seems like it automatically leads to um, amputation of some type. And gangrene is simply a situation where the tissue in your body does not have enough blood supply to, to make it live. Uh, there are two kinds of gangrene. One's called a dry gangrene, and that's a, that is when there's not an infection present. So if someone develops a, a sudden infarct, a lot like a heart attack where a part of the, the, the heart wall dies, you can get a similar thing in the skin in your foot where a, a, a part of the skin dies because a blood vessel has suddenly clotted off for whatever reason. And in that situation, the skin actually becomes mummified uh, and people can lose toes in that way. And that's what dry gangrene is. A wet gangrene is a situation where an infection has caused the blood vessels to clot off and that has led to the tissue not being able to survive. So um, that's wet gangrene and what can happen with wet gangrene is you get into this vicious, vicious cycle where the infection causes the blood vessel to clot off, which leads to more um, tissue death, which leads to more infection because the dead tissue is something that the, um, that the uh, uh, bacteria can eat. Um, so gangrene is always a a very a significant concern because it means that your tissue is dying. So it has to be treated aggressively. Uh, generally, we treat it by removing the dead portions of the tissue and allowing the live portions to recover by getting rid of the infection or to make it so that the blood uh, supply is reestablished re in the foot so that if you have a clotted blood vessel, uh, we'd ask a vascular surgeon to see you to make sure that it's not clotted. Um, so that, that is uh, more or less the treatment of, uh, of gangrene. Uh, it's not quite as scary as it sounds. It is something that just needs to be treated aggressively to make sure that it doesn't get worse. 
And I think we should point out that, you know, patients with diabetes have multiple different reasons for developing gangrene. One is we've mentioned that they, they have a very low sensation once the diabetes and the peripheral neuropathy gets more advanced, so they can't feel when they have an injury. Second is if their, their diabetes is under poor control, they don't fight off infections, and in fact, the high blood sugar actually promotes the growth of bacteria. So there's a second sort of strike against them with, with the infection sort of getting out of control faster than it would in a normal person. And then as you pointed out, most patients with diabetes also have some element of vascular disease, so they already don't have good blood supply. And again, blood supply is very important for, for fighting infection. It brings in the white blood cells, it brings in oxygen, and then takes away some of the, uh, uh, the toxins that are formed by the infection. Plus, it also helps to get those antibiotics in where they need to be. And if you can't get those antibiotics, you can't get oxygen, you can't get nutrients into that area, the infection is very difficult to treat without just simply removing the portion that's infected. So I, I, think, I think we've all had the opportunity to see uh, a gangrenous limb that, as you mentioned, just sort of cycles, gets into this very bad cycle of just getting worse and worse and worse uh, without being able to intervene. So thank you for that description. Exactly, all very good reasons to treat this aggressively and to just make sure that your, um, that your sugars are under good control and that, um, and that if you have uh, blood supply problems to your foot that they're monitored and treated as aggressively as uh, they should be. Well, I think, I think the, the key here that we've sort of hammered home is to treat your diabetes um, seriously and, and get your blood sugar under control. And I think you also mentioned the combination of smoking and diabetes is is, is very bad combination. And if uh, it's one of the things that uh, you should aggressively try to quit smoking if you are smoking and develop diabetes. But I think this has been an excellent discussion in general about the, the treatment of the diabetic problem in the foot and sort of how this can go from a, a relatively simple problem, which is primarily preventive in nature and monitoring in nature, to something that can be limb-threatening. Um, you know, if you develop the, the serious complications of, of uh, diabetes that result in developing gangrene in one of your toes or in your foot from one of these injuries, it can lead to a fairly rapidly advancing uh, limb-threatening uh, condition. Anything that that we haven't discussed that you feel like patients uh, who are interested in this topic need to know? Well, I think that some of the take-home points and the places where I see my diabetic patients get into trouble is, number one, if you develop a callus on the bottom of your foot, that, that is something that should be uh, addressed because calluses on the bottom of your foot commonly lead to ulcerations, which then can then lead to uh, deeper infections that uh, require more urgent treatment. And so I, I like to think about a callus on the bottom of someone's diabetic foot a little like taping a rock to their foot. It can have that kind of destructive effect on the uh, skin. And so if you have a callus like that, it really needs to be looked at on a frequent basis and you need to have some, um, some advice on how to take care of it. The second thing that I'd like to hammer home is, uh, is like you said, uh, if you develop swelling in your foot, um, I would like for the primary care doctors and for also people with diabetes to understand that this is more commonly a, a stress injury, a stress fracture, or even a potential dislocation of the foot that is happening in progress. And you really need to, to have that evaluated before it becomes uh, something that really deforms the foot and makes it difficult to place into a, sh uh, into a, uh, uh, a shoe. I would also like to say that uh, just to let the patients with Medicare know that as a part of their benefits in Medicare, in certain cases, especially when they have had ulcerations or they have peripheral neuropathy or some other risk factor in addition to the diabetes, that they are entitled under their Medicare benefits to have, uh, to be fit with diabetic shoes and to get diabetic inserts. Uh, that is something that they can get and it really is a part of your health benefits. And I, I think that a lot of people don't know that 
and I think it's nice for people to uh, to be informed of that. Well, I, I, I think that's all good advice, and I, I want to thank you for a very thorough discussion of uh, diabetic problems in the foot and look forward to further discussions on this topic in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Randall. It's always a pleasure.